Just uh, in context, uh, last week we talked about Reverend Levy, it was the part one, that told that uh, where God was calling us to be holy because he is holy. And uh, uh, it was just a nod to know that our lives are not to look like the lives of the way we used to live. We are a new creature, we, are, we have a new life, and that new life desires transformation. That new life desires that we make a big change yeah. and now start following a new life. And uh, today we're just going to continue with Reverend Living Part 2. And this is going to be based on Reverend Fear. Who was the one for Reverend Fear? Yeah, so we're going to talk about Reverend Fear. Yeah, so like so many important words in the Bible, we need to define and to understand what fear is about. In the Bible, the Bible in very many instances talks about fear, but there's also the world, the world also talks about fear. There are a lot of fears in this world. If you go to the dictionary, to, the, to, to Google, you'll find almost more than 1,000 words that talk about fear. The fear of this, the fear of this, the fear of this. You find a lot of fears. And, and so because we live in a world that makes us afraid, <laughs> we see when we talk about the fear of God, some people think about that God who has got a stick, <laughs> whom we should run away from because we fear him. But to understand that, we also need to, to first of all understand what reverent fear for God is not. Fear of God is not being scared of God. I want to start there. Literally, we're not talking about being scared of God. And that is why uh, our, our scripture for, to, uh, for today talks, starts with, uh, uh, and, and as it was read out, before even he talks about Reverend Fear, he talks about him being a father. That's what he says in verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impersonate, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. So, he's our father. So we should not be afraid of him. The other way that we think fear is about. So it's not about being scared of God. Though, this is certainly a stance that most of us know. But the fear that we are talking about, just in brief, is a fear that shows the difference between us and God. Just like we had last week. God is a holy God. He's separated. He's, he's different. <laughs> he's different from us, and we must know that. He's our Father, and that's why we should fear Him. Because of His position. Okay. So, uh, Fear of God is something greater than also being just the fear of retribution. This is not fear of punishment or what God might do to his people. In fact, in Jeremiah 33, this is what he says. He would cleanse them, forgive them, and do great for them. And they fear and tremble precisely because of the good he does for them. So we see a father who wants to work in us. His plan for us to fear him is a plan of where he, he will cleanse us, he will work in us. He's the one who works in us. Okay, to fear. We don't just do it ourselves. Salvation brings us into fear of him. We don't just do it. The moment we know, and that's what we are going to see. But before we go into that, we need to understand the Bible talks about fear, reverent fear, and fear of God, very many times in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So we need to understand why God called his people to fear him, and why people in the Bible fear him. So in the Old Testament, uh, if you open Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, Deuteronomy 10, 12, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? That's, that was Moses asking the Israelites. 
but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Okay? For our own good. Whatever we do, the way God wants us to live is for our own good. It's not for Him. You don't fear God for Him. We fear Him because it's for our good. To live a life that is pleasing. To live a life that He created us to live in. So in the Old Testament, it's clear it's a clear connection is made between God and keeping His command and serving Him. So in the Old Testament, fearing God was living, keeping His commandments and serving Him. That's why He talks about serving Him as well. So that's part of fearing God. In another context, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 32, 39 says, I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. What is God saying? And how do we how relate it to, to fearing him the way he wanted us? God is speaking to his own people first of all. He's, he's talking even in, 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 in what? In the in Deuteronomy he was speaking to his own people. And this is what he's saying that the fear of him and uh, the commandments, so keeping the commandments and serving him is for our good. And for the good, in Jeremiah, it's talking about for the good of their children. So it's not only for you, it's even for your descendants that are going to come. Okay. Because you are in a covenant relationship with him. Okay. And that covenant is the one who begins that covenant. So, it is important to know that God, in the Old Testament, God is saying, I plant the desire in you. You don't do it yourself. He plants the desire in our hearts to love Him, to serve Him. And that's what He said, I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever for their own good. And because of this, the product that comes out is what? Is the promise that comes. What about in the New Testament? 2 Corinthians 7.11 It says, Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. So, so according to 2 Corinthians 7, 11, fear in God is connected to holiness. Just like we had last, uh, last Sunday. Be holy because I'm holy. When you live a holy life, that shows that you have the fear of God. Fear in God means that you keep in line with His will and are kept from grave sins, things that make us unholy, things that separate us from God, things that separate us from our relationship with God. In Revelation chapter 14, 7, what does fear in God mean? In Revelation 14, 17, fearing God is connected to judgment. Again, just like 1 Peter 17 to 19. Okay, our, 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 our verse for today. And this is what he says, Revelation 14, 7 says, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth and see the springs of water. So again, both the New Testament and the Old Testament bring us to the definition of what? 
reverent fear is. Okay? Who was supposed to put up reverent fear? Oh, they forgot. Okay. Uh, reverent fear of God means respect for Him. He's a holy God. He's seated on the throne. He's our Father. And because He's our Father, we have to respect Him. Okay? And obeying Him. Because we want to become like Him, we must live a life of obedience. And that's what He has called us to do. It means that you acknowledge Him as your Father. That's where it begins. Respecting Him says, I acknowledge you as the Father. And thus to have the right to be Lord of my life. That means what he says I do. Because it's for our good. So, 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 so reverent fear is respect and obedience. Knowing that the Father is at the throne of my life. It means that you act out of reverence for him. It is the only appropriate response to what the Father has done. Okay, so reverent fear arises out of the knowledge of grace, mercy, steadfast love and forgiveness. The moment you start to understand grace, mercy, what God has done for you, his love for us, his forgiveness of our sins, then you will fear God. Then it won't be something that is a burden. Knowing what he has done. The Apostle Paul, Apostle John, in 1 John 4.18 says, teaches about love and says, so, uh, and he says that love of God casts cast out fear. And what fear are we talking about? That's the love of God. The reverence fear of the Lord is designed to help us grow to become more like God. To grow in love. And when we grow in love, even the things that we fear will not be a problem. The reverence fear of God is the fear that conquers all fears. If you fear God, I dare you all fears will be conquered. There will be nothing that you fear. Because the person who truly fears God fears nothing else. He will not fear man. He will not fear tomorrow. He will fear nothing. So, so the mo- if we learn to fear God, we will not be afraid of anything. Because God will be seated at our throne. What God, we will listen to God and God will tell us where to go. That is where we started, that God will do the work. He said, I will, in Jeremiah 32, I will give them one heart. When God calls us, he works in us. He works in us in all his ways. He will give them one heart, that they may fear me forever for their own good. And he speaks to us about that. He talks to us about obedience. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We will not be afraid of anything. Because God has already given us a spirit of what? Of power, of love, and self-discipline. Are you living a self-discipline life? You have that spirit that God has given to us? It is available. We are his children and he's our father. We just need to develop that relationship with him. We just need to live in obedience. Therefore, what is Paul talking about after that definition that I've gone through? Of uh, taking a lot of time to have to make us understand what uh, reverent fear is about. Peter is telling us that reverent fear of our Father may well be the key 
to have been able to reject the things of this world that can ultimately doom our souls. What are those things that keep us from, make us afraid, and keep us from trusting Him? If you want to overcome, you need to live in order to fear for God. Peter is trying to tell us that, guys, we need to live a new life. God is our Father who has reconciled us to Himself through his, the life, death, and resurrection of His Son. He's our Father who tenderly loves us, provides for us, and who has promised to never leave us. But He's also a judge. And He judges each person in passion. Okay? He's a loving God. He loves us. But just like Peter has said, encouraging the encouraging the foreigners, in 1 Peter 1 17 he says, He judges our work in passion. He doesn't have favoritism. He doesn't have favorites. But the type of judgment is totally foreign to what we know in this life. Okay, so, so, so the type of judgment he has for us as Christians, as our Father, is not the judgment that is out there. It's a different judgment. Romans 5, 8. Some of you know it is. Uh, but uh, talks about the proven love that the Father has for us while we were still sinners. And then he drew us close to himself. He's a good Father. He saved us. And we are secure in him. Do we believe in God's security? Do we believe that we are secure in God? In the way we live. But even in that security, he is not a God, he is not a father who smiles and nods and approves at our choices when we make wrong choices. He doesn't become happy. He's a holy God. He's far away from sin. He's not happy when we live a life that is not pleasing to Him. He judges our conduct. He judges our conduct. In other words, He judges our actions with absolute fairness. And with complete understanding of each of us specifically. He understands each one of us. He understands our struggles. My struggles are not keeping struggle. Okay. But he's able to work with each of us. And that's why I told you that the fear of the Lord comes out of grace, out of his love, out of his steadfast love. I've never seen this. Okay. But then he loves us to walk in obedience with him. We therefore can't live a life without consequence for our actions as Christians. Let's not take God and salvation for granted. And that's why in 1 Peter he talks about what he has done on the cross. Verse 18 says, For you know that it was not with perishable such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious 
blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And therefore, we should not take what God has done for granted. For you know, that's what he said in verse 18, you and me know, we all know, we know the cost of our redemption. It was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed but with the precious blood of his son, a lamb without flesh. You can see the love of God and how much it cost on the cross when you say, how can I sin against a love like this? How can I sin against the God who has loved me like this? A healthy fear for God includes the fear of the consequence of disobedience. There may be times that I'm tempted or tried when even I may forget some of the better reasons for obeying God. Sometimes I forget the reasons for obeying God. And that is when I really need to think of the consequence. A consequence for sin. There is a consequence for sin. Reverence of God helps us to take Him and His beneficial law seriously. If we know God, there will be things we may be afraid to say. There may be some things that we may be able to say out of our mouth that we must have to think about what we say. There may be some sick places that we may be afraid to go to because of the fear of God. I may have to decide that I may not go to a certain place or to say some things. And this is holy carefulness, living an intentional life. Reverence for God calls us to live intentional lives. To think about what we do and how our actions. Okay. Just like Hebrew 10, Peter 6, 31 tells us, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. God has not created us for judgment. He has done it already on the cross for you and me, his our father. But if we sin willfully, we sin willfully. Then there is a fearful expectation of judgment. And fear indignation which will devour the adversary. So, guys, we, we, we need to think of, let us not live a life where even we judge ourselves before even God judges us. Let's not sin willfully. So what will happen to us if we don't fear God? He has the right to judge us. He has the right. He has the right to judge you and me. Do not defy him. But acknowledge him as your creator. Savior and Lord. Above all, remember he's a holy God. Give over your life to him. Leave it out of reverence to him. Out of fear for him. Not because of retribution, not because he's walking with a stick, but because you love him. And be saved from condemnation. Condemnation 
if you sing with him, you will be condemned. But if you live in fear, in, uh, in, in fear of God, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live not according to the flesh, but according to his spirit. Amen? We need to live a life of grace. We need to live a life of display. As we live a life of reverence for our Father. Amen. Let us pray, Father. We thank you that every day we live is a journey of grace, a journey of mercy, a journey of love. We also know that we cannot live this life without you. We know that you have sent your Holy Spirit to convict us of sin, righteousness, and judgment, to help us, O oh God. And we thank you for that, that we are not alone. We have your Holy Spirit. And above all, we thank you that you went to the cross to die for our sins. And we have to do nothing apart from living an obedient life. A life that pleases you. Father, we pray that you will help us. You will continue to, um, to empower us to live for you. To open our gates, or the gates of our hearts, that you may come in. And live there. We pray that our hearts, we pray that we surrender all our hearts, our minds, our soul, our body to you that you may work in us. That we will not be afraid of anything because we know perfect love drives out fear. And that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and sound mind. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, and we pray that we will live changed life. In Jesus' name, we pray that we Amen. Amen.